All right, let's take our Bibles, turn to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter uh, 20. 1 Kings 20. Robbie, would you pray and ask God to bless our time together this morning? Dear Father, thank you for the thank you for the care and pray and honor and pray for the Sunday school lesson that you will speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. First Kings chapter 20, dealing with um, two kings, uh, Ahab, who was the king of um, the northern tribes of Israel, and then Ben-Hadad, who was the king of Syria. Ben-Hadad made a league with Ahab. And uh, the, the league was a consensual one and it's like, you know, we're brothers and all this sort of stuff. Well, God wasn't pleased with that. And God wanted uh, Ahab to utterly destroy and wipe out Ben-Hadad and the Syrians. As always, Ahab was not obedient. And so what happens was, as in anything, God sends a prophet along. And I remember someone saying that God's prophets were God's men for crisis time. So the prophet comes along and, and uh, sticks the finger in Ahab's face. And he gives, him, he gives him this scenario, which is what we're going to read. And in this scenario is a very important life lesson that we want to look at this morning. So in 1 Kings chapter 20, would you look at verse 25? He says, And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbour in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then said he unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him. So that in smiting him, he wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king, this is Ahab, by the way, and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king and said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be, thyself hast decided it. And he hasted and took the ashes away from his face, and the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house heavy and displeased, and came to Samaria. So God lets Ahab know that you're going to die and be destroyed because you didn't do what I wanted you to do, and that was kill Ben-Hadad. But in this little scenario that the prophet gives the king, as I said, is a very important principle. It's in verse 40, he says this, As thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Now, the very thought is this, is that we can get so busy going here and there that there will be things in our life that will go missing, gone. Ahab had one thing to do, one thing, and that was, and he says here in the thing, verse number 20, uh, 39, keep this man or guard this man. So this was the priority. This was the one thing. In other words, what Ahab had to do, all he had to do was utterly destroy King Ben-Hadad of Syria. And the, and the prophet gives him this scenario and said, because you were busy going here and going there he escaped he left all right and he only had, like i said he had the one thing that he had to do was to guard this man one thing 
you know, as I said, we can be so busy going here and going there that there are things in our life, there are priorities in our life that will just go, gone. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a study this morning. We're going to look at four, just four, four scriptures. And I want you to go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. The first thing that will go, if we are too busy going here and there, is our time with the Lord. All right. I think to prioritise our time and focus on the one thing sounds easy, doesn't it? But yeah, it's, it can be difficult. And especially we do live in a, a busy day. I mean, this week would have been really busy getting the workshop sorted out and, and so on and so forth. And even though there's retirement, you still get busy in retirement. So we lead busy lives. But we sometimes allow the busyness of life, we allow ourselves going here and going there and chasing this and chasing that, that we forget one of the main things that we ought to be doing, and that is spending time with the Lord. So in Luke chapter 10, verse number 38, it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, remember that. Mary sat at the feet of Jesus. Verse 40. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. So, in other words, she was going here and going there. She was in the kitchen. She was in the dining room. She was back in the kitchen. She was over here. She was doing this. She was doing that. The word cumbered means that she was distracted. Now, we as independent Baptists, we, we, we do place a heavy uh, requirement, I guess, in serving the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes in serving the Lord, we can be so distracted that we're not sitting at the feet of the Lord to learn from him. All right. So Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. You see, because she was so distracted, not sitting at the feet of the Lord, what happens? She starts accusing the Lord. Lord, don't you care about me? I'm busy serving you. Don't you care about me? Verse 41, Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. What is the one thing that is needful in our life? To sit at the feet of the Lord. In other words, we call it having our devotional time. All right. To, uh, to make sure we sit at the feet of Jesus even before we start the day. To make sure that we sit, we read the scriptures. Now, I'm, look. I'm probably, when, when it comes to devotions, I know we should pray. That's, we, we, we talk to the Lord. We, we cast our care upon him. Uh, and I know that. And we bring people before the Lord. But I, I've always been of the persuasion, and you, you may differ about this, and that's fine. I've always been on the persuasion that I would rather hear more from the Lord than me doing all the talking. So, again, I'm not saying we don't pray. We ought to pray. All right. But it's, it's important that we read more Bible than anything else. And the reason why I say that is this, is because throughout the day, there are times where you just can't stop and read the Bible. But as you go throughout the day, you can always talk to the Lord. Right. So for me, it's more important that you get your Bible reading time in. Get your Bible read. Sit at the feet of Jesus. And hear from Jesus. Look at what Jesus said about Martha. He says this in verse 41. Thou art careful. So not only was she cumbered, she was distracted. Now she's anxious. Now that she's worried. She's full of cares. And look at this. And troubled about many things. 
So all these things came into Martha's life. She was troubled about so many different things that though she was serving, she was distracted from what she ought to be doing. She was busy going here and going there and her time with the Lord was gone. All right. Now, this is good for us to be reminded of this because of the day in which we live. Now, I know that some people are not morning people. I get that. All right. Some are morning people. They get up early. I wish I was, I, I wish I was a real morning person. I, 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 get up, I normally get up about six. The other morning I was awake at three. I don't know why I was awake at three. I couldn't sleep. Had a bit of a cough. And then I, then I did something. I plugged in my ears and I started listening to preaching. Well, that just got me wound up. I couldn't go back to sleep after that. And as I was listening to the preaching, I got some other thoughts. So uh, probably about four o'clock, I got out of bed, sat out in the kitchen. I was just reading and doing a few other things, sermon preparation, stuff like that. To be honest with you, I wish that was an everyday occurrence. But it, it's not. It's not. But we have to be disciplined in making sure that we give Jesus the first fruits, the first fruits. The best time of the day is before anyone else. And I tell you, I get a little bit frustrated at home because now that the kids are working, getting up at six o'clock used to be before everyone else gets up. Now you've got Megan who gets up at 5.30, she gets up at 6, you got Robert, he gets up early in the morning to go off to work and all those sorts of things. And so therefore, when it was once very quiet, now it's not, right? So I've got to now look at, what do I do? But I've still got to be disciplined in making sure that I give the Lord Jesus Christ the first fruits of the day. I fell into the trap. And I still got to correct myself. I fell into the trap of while I was waiting for the kettle to boil, I'll jump on my phone, check this, check that, check my email, check Facebook, whatever. And, and you know the danger of that? The distraction. Yeah. The distraction. So it's like, no, turn the phone off or leave it out here, whatever, and just give the Lord your undivided attention. Jesus said that one thing is needful. All right. So don't get so busy going here and there that your time with the Lord is gone. Because it's hard to make that up during the day, isn't it? Even at night time, you might think, well, I didn't do my Bible reading this morning. So tonight what I'll do is I'll read my Bible. But then you know what happens? You know, you fall asleep. That's a generational thing. No, that's exactly right. You can't get up early and stay up late. And the Bible says it's foolish to do that, get up early and to stay up late. But if we said, right, I'll read my Bible before I go to bed, what happens is, is oh, that's on the TV. I might watch that. Or we get, a, we get family come over. Inevitably, something happens to rob you of that time. Mm -hmm. And then you get busy focused on other things. So time with the Lord. Have a look at Philippians chapter 3. So Jesus said one thing is needful. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Look at verse number 10. Paul says this, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. I, in other words, we say, I haven't attained yet. I haven't arrived yet. But this one thing I do. Is the priority. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So Jesus said about Martha, one thing was needful, and that's to sit at the feet of Jesus. Paul now is saying, you know, I haven't apprehended, I haven't attained, 
I want to know him. I want to know the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conform. I, I want to follow after. He says there in, uh, in verse, number, um, verse number 12, I follow after. In other words, he's in pursuit. He's in pursuit. I, I want to know Jesus more. I want to understand him more. And as a matter of fact, what he calls it, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize. This reward that he's talking about, he knows that if he's going to obtain this prize, if he knows that if he's going to obtain this reward, there's one thing that he's got to do. He's got to forget the past. Mm. He's got to forget the past. Now, we won't look at it in its entirety, but you can read all of chapter 3, especially the beginning, where he says, you know, I'm of the tribe of Benjamin, I'm this and I'm that, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a... Uh, concerning the law, persecuting the church or the righteous. Matt, he, had a, uh, he had a CV that was right up here. Every, his qualifications was all up. But he said, I count those things but done. I count those things but done. The most important thing that I want to do is I want to forget those things that are behind and reach forth to those things that are before me. Right? So when we get busy going here and there, those things that we look at are gone. The prize. You know, you can't lose your salvation, I mean. We are eternally secure. But you know you can lose your rewards. You can lose your rewards. So the humility of the Apostle Paul by saying, I count not myself to have apprehended. I haven't arrived. I'm not there yet. But this one thing I do. Some of us say, oh, it's hard to forget. I understand that. But God wouldn't say forget if we couldn't. Sometimes we like to hang on to those things that are in the past. And you know, forgetting those things which are behind is not just talking about the bad things, even the good things. Because we can be living in the past, past revivals, past this, past that. And, and oh, I remember back in the day when, when more people were getting saved and all of this. We could be living so far back here that we're not reaching forth to the things that God has before us over here. All right. So busy here and they're gone. All right. I want you to go to Psalm 27. Psalm 27. You notice the term one thing. One thing. It's not hard, is it? Sit at the feet of Jesus, read your Bible in the morning. I'm not a good reader. That's okay. Just read a paragraph, read a chapter. It's not hard reading a chapter. Even some of the smaller books in the New Testament. Not hard. But Satan is a master of distraction. Look at Psalm 27, verse number one. Uh, sorry, verse number four. One thing. Have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Now, I've got this. This one thing, be in church. Be in God's house. And I know you hear this one, it's good. But do you know that there are Christians in our church as well as other churches that get so busy going here and there and doing other things that time in the house of God gone gone uh, for me because we have one service a week I, I would think it would be a priority to be in that one service a week at least at least is it so hard to be in one service a week and yet people struggle all the time. All the time. Why? Because they've allowed the busyness. They're here. They're there. Go on here. Blah, 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 blah. You know, we have seven days. Seven days God's given us. Monday through to Saturday. You know, go and do what you've got to do. But why can't we give now? Why can't we give the Lord at least one hour? Three no, well, we're nine till twelve. Let's say three hours on a Sunday. Is that so difficult? No. 
One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after. You know, uh, I, as, I don't know whether you do it as a pastor. I like watching different church services. And um, I was watching a, a guy the other day, Eddie White. They had some tent revivals. Eddie White is from Georgia, I think. I like those southern preachers. I think they're good. They get with it when they preach. And, uh, you know, you sit there. And it's on the big screen TV. I've got it playing through my laptop on the screen. And, and it's, it's good to be able to watch that. It really is. But you still can't capture the spirit of the service. You know what I mean? Like to be in the house of God. That the Lord Jesus ordained, if I put it this way, he ordained his people to assemble. And I know that he lives within us. I know that when we have our devotions, we too can experience the presence of the Lord in our devotions. But there's something special about God's people coming together. We've enjoyed this this last week. Uh, Sunshine Baptist Church have had their missions conference. And I was saying to Brother John, I, I, really, I really believe that small churches, I'm talking about in our, in our movement, small churches now, I think have more of the presence of God than what some of the bigger ones do. And so it's just my observation. And I said to Brother John, it's like the bigger churches always seem to be outdoing the other bigger churches. You know what I mean? And they, they, lose, they lose the purpose <coughs> of what God's people assembling is all about. So, you know, we went on uh, Wednesday night, Thursday night, I didn't go Friday night, Masters went Friday night. And it was just a blessing to be in the service, singing the old time songs, listening to old time preaching. You know, it's just, there's no, there was no um, fanfare. There was, you know what I mean? It was just having church. There was no big noting, there was no this and no that. And it was just, hey, preacher, come up and preach. and. Buster Kinsey was preaching, his little fellow, and he's, and he's quite a good preacher. I, I enjoy his messages. It was a blessing. But you had to be there. You had to be there. So this is what's important. David said, one thing have I desired of the Lord, to dwell in the house of the Lord and of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to acquire in his temple. You know, to, to behold the Lord. Again, it's different being in the house of God. All right. So don't let the busyness of life, don't allow you running here. Maybe someone listening to this on YouTube soon will, will, will get this. Don't go busy here, go busy there, but, and then what, Sunday morning's gone. Well, I'll always go next Sunday morning. But hey, well, I wish we would wake up to the wiles of the devil. I wish we would wake up. If we would just be more dogmatic. We've listen as independent Baptists. We've lost our dogmatic nature. I'm not going to let anything stop me from going to church. I'm going to be in the house of God. It's important for us to be there. So let's let's think about giving the Lord at least that Sunday morning time slot. And I know many of you have sacrificed. I think Brother John last week you had a family thing going on, but you were here in the house of God, and then after you went to the birthday party. And it's commendable because what that does is it lets unsaved people know my priority is the Lord. That's he saved me. You know what I mean? Like my family, none of my family members died on the cross to save me. I'm not obligated to them in a sense. I'm obligated to my saviour. All right. So let me give you the last thing. Go to, go to uh, Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Look at verse number 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honour thy father and mother. 
And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he was very joyful at that saying. No, he wasn't. He was sad at that saying and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. <laughs> now, Jesus didn't rebuke him for the wealth that he had. He has been a busy young man, accumulating all this wealth. And Jesus said, yep, yeah, that's okay, but one thing you lack. Sell whatsoever have, give to the poor, take up the cross and follow me. Taking up the cross. Mm. Sacrifice. I, mean, I think it was A.W. Tozer said, when you see a man bearing his cross, was it bearing his cross, he won't, you won't see him again or something of that nature. Why? Because he's just sacrificed his life for the Lord. So the busyness of this young man and accumulating all this stuff, which was fine, and now the Lord has said, okay, I want you to take what you've got, sell whatsoever you have, and I want you to give to the poor. That's a big ask, isn't it? That's a big ask. If Jesus did to that, said that to us, we'd be like, am I, is that you, Lord? Am, am I really hearing from you? Or is that the devil? But I think in, in this day, in 2020, and we're still in the early part of the year. I think there's too many Christians who've laid down their crosses. When we're told to take up the cross. Paul says, I die daily. Self has to be crucified continually. One thing he lacked. And that was that sacrificial, sacrificing things for the Lord. So we started off in the book of First Kings where the prophet gives this scenario. You only had one thing to do, Ahab. One thing, and that was to kill Ben-Hadad, destroy him. But you were busy going here and busy going there. He's gone. Escaped. He slipped away. And that happens in our life. Time of the Lord slips away. Time in church slips away. You know, our sacrifice taking up our cross slips away. We've got to make sure and prioritise and come back and say, you know what, Lord, I've got to prioritise this one thing. One thing. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your goodness and blessing to us. Thank you for the word of God. I pray, God, that you'll bless the morning tea. And I pray that the lesson this morning, uh, this reminder in our life uh, would be heeded. And, uh, Lord, that we would be careful this week that we would give you our undivided attention. Lord, that we would be mindful to put first things first so that we may please you in Jesus' name.